Oh, well, John, thanks for coming in, mate. I know it's pretty early in the morning. You've been a busy boy lately, writing, rehearsing and recording the new album, New Jersey. How does it differ from Slippery When Wet? Well, I think it picks up where Slippery left off and it keeps going. You know, it's a little up and to the left, you know. Um, it's a way for us to re-familiarize ourselves, I guess, for lack of a better word, with our fans. Um, and then show them that, you know, what we're doing now. What about the pressures, the need to follow up Slippery with another hugely successful album? Sure, you know, I mean, you want it to happen again because um, it's such a good feeling, you know? I mean, just the idea that we went around the world and headlined every hall, the biggest halls we could find. And it was amazing, and I think Slippery did about 13 or 14 million copies. So, um, to do that again, would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Tell us about Bad Medicine, the new single. Bad Medicine uh, is, like I said, that's where we like feel we left off. It's it was it's it's tongue in cheek and it's it's got a lot of humor in it. Um, it's sort of like the old song. Remember, I got the rock in the mood, yeah, and the boogie boogie. Ah. It's sort of like that. We uh, lyrically kept it tongue in cheek, you know, and and musically just went with, with a real guitar heavy kind of sound. And you're shooting the video for uh, Bad Medicine in Los Angeles tomorrow, including some of your fans apparently. Tell us about that. It's live. It's, it's going to be on the stage. It's uh, going to have a lot of kids in it. And the whole thing about it is video is pretty much getting tired these days. So what we've done is we got a couple of hundred video cameras and we're giving them to the first couple hundred kids that come tomorrow. We're letting 5,000 kids in and we're gonna play for them. And then um, we're giving these cameras out and the kids are gonna be able to film what they see, the way they see it. And that's gonna be the video shot by the kids. John, on to a, uh, a very personal question. The, uh, the female staff here at the, uh, the MTV office put me up to this one. There's been stories from impeccable sources about your impending marriage. Tell me, mate, are you getting married? No. no. But what about all the reports? I'm never home. I won't take out the garbage. I throw all my clothes on the floor when I'm done wearing them. I don't ever clean up. I'd be a hell of a husband. <laughs> so, so are all you guys looking forward to uh, getting on the road again? I'm not. I tell you the truth. Um, I, I'm at least that I'm preparing for it because the slippery tour was so long. It was like 17 months. Um, we were out before the album. You know, we were touring. This time, at least we're going to give the album a month or so before we hit the road. And um, slowly but surely, I'm falling back into the groove. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm expected in my mind to get back to work. I remember when, uh, when I caught up with you guys in Melbourne on the Slippery Tour, you really caused a few problems for the hotel security. Mayhem. Kids outside my hotel room in Melbourne all the day, all night. And at the same time, a Bowie concert was going to go on sale. So they started lining up on Friday for, for Monday morning. And by Monday, all the Bowie fans were on this side of the street, and all the Bon Jovi fans were over here. And we would just like look out the window and it would be like, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Then we started doing, ah. <laughs> yeah. We started goofing with the kids and it was great because they were out there singing Beatles songs and you know, I mean, all night long. I couldn't go to sleep. I remember putting tissue in my ears because I just couldn't sleep anywhere. The time change really screwed me up. And then the, the kids would go all night long, you know, and it was really, really a thrill. I didn't think that that happened anywhere in the world anymore. It was, it was really great. Kids were great. I bought a wig and a hat and it was, it was really cool. A mustache. So how would you like your next Australian tour to be? Like that one. That's all I could ever ask for. That one was great. Kids were great. Audience response was really good. I had a great time in Australia. Brisbane was wonderful. And then we went up to the North Shore, the, the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I just lay there for a couple of days, didn't move, had a cold drink in his hand, suntan lotion in his hand. <laughs> it was great. Are you slowing up at all? 
now I'm just just put the key in the ignition again and turned it over. Now I'm going to get out and dust the car off and drive away. There's some stories during the rounds about uh, Bon Jovi working on some anti-drug project. It's uh, it's in the works. Um, it's all in paper right now, but uh, there is plans to do an album um, of bands that someone has died from drugs or alcohol. We're doing Thin Lizzy. We've done The Boys Are Back in Town. Someone will do ACDC, someone will do Zeppelin, someone will do The Who, you know, and, and um, it's like that. And, and uh, there's a lot of big bands that are penciled in. Your manager, Doc McGee, of course, um, had a few problems with drugs, an alleged 5,000 tons of grass he was trying to import. Well, there was a, a little situation, but what happened is we, he's uh, become involved in a foundation um, that's going to help a lot of people, you know? It's a real positive kind of thing. All right, thank you, John. We do appreciate you coming into the...